Welcome to the kickoff meeting for Planning Character Area 1. I'm Tempe Mayor Corey Woods, and I could not be more happy that you are here participating in this process. Planning is expected to last through the end of the year with multiple opportunities for public participation along the way. So please stay engaged. Character area plans are a great way for residents to convey the vision and goals of an area to create positive change. These plans can help guide our economic development division, who can then refer to the plan to see what kinds of businesses would be most appreciated in a given area. These plans can also guide our planners, who can then refer to them when working with businesses and developers to help guide landscape treatments and housing options, or when creating new bike paths, planning public art, or designing streetscapes. We are thrilled to have you along for this process. We can't wait to hear about the vision residents have for this unique part of Tempe. So we thank Mayor Woods for uh, those wood words, and then now Ambika will take it over. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Thanks, everyone, joining. We will go ahead and do some introductions and presentation as we move along. But uh, we have staff from Community Development Division. My name is Ambika Adhikari. I'm the principal planner in the Long Range Planning Division of Community Development. We have some planners. We have staff from Economic Development. We also have staff from Transportation and Transit. And uh, we'll have <coughs> presentations and discussion today. But uh, before we go forward, I'm going to ask the Deputy Director of Community Development, Ryan Libeck, to basically give some initial remarks and introduction to the character area planning process. Ryan? Great. Thank you, Ambika. This is a great opportunity. I want to thank everyone, all the residents that have attended uh, this meeting today so far. Um, this is our kickoff meeting. We're excited to participate and undertake the Character Area 1, which is the property properties north of the 202 freeway. I think this is an exciting time and opportunity to look at design and placemaking, a character area tool that's um, part of the general plan efforts. As we undertake this process and efforts, we encourage you to be involved. Uh, there'll be opportunities on many points, as the mayor stated, to participate and provide feedback. But first of all, we want to hear from you what you like and don't like about your neighborhood, what aspects of the neighborhood are important to you. And those answers will hopefully come with a lot of input and participation on your involvement. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ryan. That's uh, greatly appreciated. So I also want to thank uh, the mayor for his uh, initial remark and uh, Sona, Brenda, thank you so much for initiating all of these meetings. Uh, we will, we have uh, staff like we talked about it and we'll introduce as we go along. But initially what I'm gonna do is for the coming, maybe about 20 minutes, myself and Robbie Aaron, my colleague at the Long Range Planning Division will make a presentation for about 20 minutes on the character area planning process. As you know, this is the kickoff meeting. This is introductory on how we do character area planning. And then we will have almost half an hour remaining for the discussions and your input and any questions that you have. We have different uh, departmental staff that can respond back to you. So I'm gonna share a screen. One second. Sonia, am I on? Yes, looks good. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, once again, welcome everyone. Thank you so much. This is a brief presentation, a introductory presentation on the character area planning process and specifically on the character area one process. The agenda today, as you saw, we had the welcome and staff introductions. Then next, we are going to do a presentation on character area planning process, how it is a part of the general plan vision of 2040. And then we'll also have some initial thoughts that we want to kind of um, start off with the character area one initial visions and thoughts, and we want to get your input on that one. And because it's a virtual meeting, we'll have some, the activities are basically questions and answer your input on some of the ideas that we'll be throwing around. And we'll also show your timeline on what are the next steps 
what is the kind of calendar that we have, and finally the questions and answers on the presentation. So welcome once again. Uh, this is the Papago North Tempe character area one. The one that you see right now is the branding of the area, kind of reflects the vision and the aesthetic part of the area. At the bottom, you see the character areas .tempe gov. That is the website for the character area, which is live as of today. And uh, um, after the presentation, you can go to the website, like Sean was mentioning, we will make the video of this recording also available on that website. And then there is also a survey that we'll discuss a little bit towards the end that actually opens today on that website for all of you. And the window of opening that is gonna be two weeks. The next time I'm gonna talk quickly about the character area planning process. I know many of you are new on the character area planning. Some of you are veterans. But uh, bear with me, I'll go to some basic ideas on how we do it. The character area planning uh, status right now is the general plan 2040 actually envisioned the character areas in Tempe. And accordingly, the city of Tempe is divided into eight character areas. Five of the character area plans have already been completed. The images that you see on the right are the completed character area plans. For example, you see the last one was done. What is the high tech area on McDowell and Scottsdale Road called? And um, three um, character area plannings are remaining. That is for one, two, and six. The effort that we are kicking off today is for character area one. This is a map showing all the eight different character areas in the city. The one that we're working on right now is in the northernmost number one, as you see with the orange hatching character area one, Papago North Tempe. What is a character area? So general plan defines the character areas as the areas that contain common design elements or characteristics or something that gives it a distinction from the neighboring areas. There are a little bit of a detailed definition on the bullet point two. Specifically, when you look at the character area, there are some traits that make it unique, like the housing or the age of the buildings, its history, the patterns of development, landscape, and so on. The images on all these slides <coughs> that you see on the right-hand side are all the pictures that we have recently taken by the staff, just to give you an idea on how the area looks like. Many of you who live in the area know this area very, very well. Uh, the character area has different elements when we do the planning and it's a high level vision and policy plan. So to begin with character area plan is high level policy level plan. It's not regulatory. I'll go into a little bit of detail on that, but it's a policy level plan. It includes the background and history of the area it uh, provides a visual survey and identification on what uh, imparts the core traits for the area in terms of the materials, the visual outlook, the landscaping, and so on. The character area plan also includes the planning principles that we propose, and it all it's always consistent with the council priorities that the city of Tempe has, and the process is always consultative, very much collaborative, throughout the process. Today is only a start. We are always available to listen to you. We'll come to your meetings. We will have that live website that is available to all of you to write and give your comments. And as the pandemic eases, we'll also have the personal meetings, in-person meetings to talk and take your input. How are the character area plans used? Like the mayor was highlighting, the character area plan is the plan for the community. So the community and the stakeholders are the owners of the plan. It is used as a reference for any future developers and stakeholders when they want to create a plan and make a proposal and do an application for a new development. They will have to look at what is included in the character area plan and make their plans and proposals consistent with the character area plan. It's also a reference for us, the staff. Anytime we get an application, as you know, we review it for design and infrastructure and zoning uh, 
uh, compatibility and many other elements, character area plan becomes one more plan for us to make sure that anything that is proposed for the area is consistent with the vision of the character area plan that has been adopted. It also provides input for other plans. As you know, CDFMP continually does a lot of plans like parks and forestry and climate change and area plans and uh, so forth. All of them can refer to the character area plan when it is relevant to that area. And then obviously it, uh, it should help in furthering the council performance measures. Just to re-emphasize one more time, the character area plans are high level vision, policy level plan, not a regulatory plan. And it includes the vision basically of the residents on how they want to see their area. Typically we think of 20 years, but it's in the long range vision. How do they want that area to look like in future? What are some of the elements that they like, what they don't dislike? All of them are captured in the character area planning. And it includes, it trades, historic references, design guidelines and principles, and the public realm principles for the area. Just to re-emphasize again, because sometimes people get concerned, hey, you are planning for my area, I have a private property here, you're not going to impact my property, right? Absolutely, yes. We are, this character area plan will not be a regulatory plan, it doesn't change densities or zoning or property right um, status. It also doesn't change the ownership status. It doesn't prohibit any types of uh, uh, requirements in the area. And it's also not exactly a code compliance issue. Those are all separate and independent. Character area planning is high level vision and policy plan. Uh, the, while preparing the character area plan, there are many plans that are of interest to us. Uh, specifically starting with the 2040 general plan. We adopted affordable housing strategy in 2019, adopted uh, climate action plan in 2019, forestry master plan in 2017. So there are several plans that are listed here that actually become the reference and input for the character area planning process. All the plannings eventually have to be compatible and consistent. This is a simplified version on how a character area plan will be impacted by different factors. We have already talked about all of these, the housing, the community, the economy, the general plan, transit, and so forth, all create and affect the preparation of the character area plan that you see in the center. This is a slightly enlarged map of the character area one. And uh, initially we have subdivided into four different areas. This is all up for discussion. This is only initial. The staff initially thought maybe, although it is one character area, it has at least some granular level differences, like in the Eastern part, there is that was and green area and some light industrial areas. On the middle, after that, if you go to the West, it's mostly residential, as you can see from that yellow uh, color residential uh, areas. Uh, it also includes the uh, uh, county island. And then if you go west again, there's another sub area which is mostly green and open as the Papago Park and the recreation, the golf course, uh, water bodies. And then finally, when you go to the west side, uh, it has uh, larger lots with uh, offices and commercial and multifamily residential. These are initial proposition by the staff that it could be subdivided into four areas, but we'll discuss this. I want to give you a very quick idea in terms of the statistics. The geographical area of character area one is about 3.35 square miles compared to 40.1 for the city of Tempe. The population of about 10,000 compared to 195,000 of city of Tempe, the character area one accounts for about 5%. And similarly, all these other numbers follow. The median age is similar to the citywide average. The household income seems to be a slightly less than the average and so forth. Here is some information from the census data compiled by ISRI, the, the uh, organization that puts the geographical information system. There are lots of really interesting information here. I'm not going to go into the detail. It gives you some diversity index. Uh, just as an example, it shows 67. That means there is 33% chance that 
at random, if you pick any two people, they will be of two different ethnicity and races. Similarly, there's the affordability index. I can explain all of this later on when it comes to a question and answer. It gives you some of the ages of housing, like you can see most of them were built between 60 and 70 and 70 and 80. Also gives you the median value of the homes and several indicators. Similarly, this other one, uh, this slide uh, represents more of the employment and the economic side, the per capita income, number of businesses, and the median income. And just the way that I described, let me not go into the detail. This is all available to you. Later on, if need be, we can discuss and go into any of these questions. Uh, this is also um, a map that shows public uh, institutions like the Laird School District, alternative learning, uh, and other areas. What I'm going to do now is for another maybe five minutes or so, Robbie Iron will uh, present some initial thoughts that we have just to initiate the discussion so that in the question and answer period, we can take a look at it. Uh, I think Sean had described it in the beginning. There's a chat box that you can go ahead and type anytime that you like. And later on, there's also going to be an opportunity for you to speak to it. So Robbie, if you are ready, you can tell me on when to change the slides. <clears throat> it's all yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, as Ambika said, for attending. My name is Robbie Aaron. I'm a planner in the Long Range Planning Department, and we'll be working with Ambika on this uh, character area one plan. What um, the idea here is, is for these initial thoughts is to just ask a question, and then we are gonna give you um, an opportunity to um, use the chat box to answer the question. Um, and then this will be sort of some public input um, that we'll use moving forward, but it's also designed to get you guys thinking about um, what you like about the area, what you think needs improvement in the area and things you would like to see. Um, and then um, also some of these questions may be, um, will probably come up in the um, survey. Um, so it's just kind of gets you thinking. And then when you take the survey, you can go in a little more detail. So um, I think if you can change the slide and we'll go on. First question is what elements set this area apart and make it unique from other parts of Tempe or the Valley as a whole? So I'll give you about a minute to um, type your answer into the um, chat box there. Brenda put the question at the top and uh, All right, so we got a lot of very good answers. Uh, lot, lots of about open space, the par, uh, Papago Park. Um, I see a lot of answers about um, historic elements, the mid-century modern design. So all very good answers. And Bika, if you can go to the next question. So the next question, what elements should be preserved, enhanced, changed, added, or taken out in order to improve the area?
All right. So you can keep putting answers in for this particular question. Um, I'll go ahead and read the next question. Is this an area where one can be young and old? Can one age in place here? And then there's a poll that should have just popped up. So you can just go ahead and click yes or no. I'll give everybody a minute to answer the poll question. And Brenda shared the poll results. 91% uh, of you feel like, yes, you can age in place here and 9% um, say no. All right, and Bika, next question, please. Is the current mix and balance of land use is appropriate? And again, there's a poll, yes or no question. And if you have any additional comments um, for this question, um, feel free to put those in the chat. All right, so it looks like 68% of you feel like, yes, the current mix and balance is appropriate and 32% um, say no. I do see some additional comments coming in um, on the chat. So thank you for those. And Vika, if you can go ahead and move to the next question, please. So the next question would be, what design criteria can we put in place to improve the quality of design and ultimately the community? I see a question in the chat, what does that mean? Uh, design criteria would mean um, the way things look, how could we improve the overall design of say, a new project that comes in? Uh, what elements can you add? Um, what things do you wanna see taken away? Um, it also can reflect the landscape. So additional shade, additional um, open space in the, in the development, um, those kinds of things. And these are things that we end up putting into um, design guidelines that the planners and um, city council and our development review commission use when evaluating a project and something that developers can look at to see what it is that we expect to see in this area. I will add to what Ravi just said. You can also think in terms of the building materials, the exterior materials, 
the building massing, the typologies of building, and so forth. All right, and Bika, you can go to the next question. If you're still answering this one, um, keep feel free. All right, so the next question is, what is one thing you want to see in the future? All right, Bika, next question, please. And then this one is, what is one thing you do not want to see in the future? All right, so feel free to keep answering the, this final question. Um, just for time purposes, um, that was the last question and I'm going to hand it back to Ampika and he'll keep uh, going with the presentation. So thank you guys. I hope that uh, got your minds thinking. Thank you so much, Ravi. Thank you, Brenda, and also Sana on supporting that. Um, so I'm going to show some quick images, visual images. Many of you who are the residents of this area probably know this place like the palm of your hand, but uh, we'll be taking lots of pictures. Ravi and I have taken some initial pictures and just wanted to give you a flavor for anyone who is new, <clears throat> maybe the staff or someone from outside on what kind of building typologies, what kind of landscape, what kind of general aesthetic prevails in that area. These are not in any particular order, but here you see some historical pictures, some institutional and some office types of building and you can see the type of landscaping open spaces really nice sonar and desert typologies <clears throat> and the rolling hills and the water bodies uh, 
older homes built in the 60s and 70s to new apartments that are being built right now, and also the landscaping that is matured in some areas to new in some areas and some light industrial that we talked about before. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on the next steps and timeline. So today, March 15, 2021, we had the introduction, the virtual public kickoff meeting that uh, we introduced this topic and we gave you the idea on how it is going to go through. We talked about a little bit about the area visual survey, design elements, patterns, and so forth. Summer 2021, in the coming months, we'll be talking about local meetings and stakeholder meetings. We will discuss the issues and aspirations and priorities in more detail. Dotocracy, in other words, just the way that Robbie was asking you a question and asking for your preference. We can, if we meet it in person, you can write it in a yellow sticky and put it in the map. If we do it virtually, there will also be a system just the way that you could do either through the poll or actually pinning down your perspectives on the areas in the map. We'll do all of that data collection and discussion in depth in summer. Come fall and winter of 2021, we will work on the draft plan, initially an outline, and then make a plan. It's not going to be a very long document. It's going to be to the point and specific, just the way that everyone feels it should be. And then it will be on the website. It will also be circular, circulated. And we'll look for your comments and inputs into that plan. And any other stakeholders, even outside the character area, one planning area, if the city residents and other neighborhoods and stakeholders, chambers of commerce and other organizations, if they want to provide an input, that's what we will gather. And our plan right now is winter 2021 towards the end of this year and beginning of 2022, we'll take it to the council for their decision. Prior to taking it to the council, we'll take it to a number of boards and commission once we have an outline in the draft to seek their input. Actually, we might like to go to them right even in the beginning so that they can provide their input right in the beginning. Here is some list of relevant boards and uh, commissions of the city of Tempe. We'll go to all of them and make uh, presentations and seek the input. Uh, eventually, as you know, the Development Review Commission will also provide its recommendation for the plan. That is the basic uh, presentation we wanted to make. Just introduce, we introduce you the character area one. We talked about the character area one and character area planning processes. We spoke about what character area plan is and what it is not. And we talked about some of the questions and initial thoughts on what would be a vision for the coming um, you know, 20 years or so. And here's a list of all of us. If you go to the, uh, the website also, you'll find us, uh, myself, Robbie who works with me and Sana who is uh, heading the neighborhood uh, division. Uh, you can contact any one of us. There's also an email, there's also a dedicated email address and phone number in the website that you can contact us in the character area. And you can always go to the character areas.tempe.gov to find more information. Now we open it for questions, discussions, uh, any, anything else you have. And in the meantime, from among the staff, if there is some very quick thing that you want to add from economic development or transportation, uh, please, please do that quickly. Uh, otherwise, we'll go to the uh, discussions and question and answer. And then we have some questions in the chat box. We can also start from that. But if you want to speak to it right now and unmute your microphone, that's also available. Thank you. Anyone from the staff has quick comments? Hey, Ambika, this is Shauna, real quick. Um, I know that uh, the first question that came in, but while we were doing the presentation, was just asking about homelessness, and that also appeared in some of the uh, chat. So just want to let you know, um, I don't know that we have the right staff on the call today, uh, and but I do want to share information on uh, the city's proposed approach, and then we can get you guys in contact with our human services staff that can speak. Thank you, Sana. 
Yeah, and then our direct information is on there. So if you want to follow up or want more information, just email uh, me directly and I can get you in contact with them. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing. Scroll to the chat box. And Bika, there's a question about the branding image, if it was a draft or final for the area one. Uh, for now, from the staff side, we liked it and we put it there. But if you have any comments, we are, you're welcome to give us comments and we can uh, take that into consideration. But uh, right now, that's what we're using. But obviously, we are open. Does anyone wants to speak or we can always go to the chat uh, boxes and respond to your question. See a couple of people with their hands up. So um, I'll go ahead and I saw David, um, your hand was up first. So I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and ask your question. You should be able to unmute. I, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a question, more of a comment. I was looking at the other character areas and trying to get some inspiration. And I noticed that the plant palettes for all of the other character areas are exactly identical. And I know it's important to have biodiversity, but I was thinking that maybe if you could identify a few, you know, specific plants that would be unique to this area, because if all of them are the same, then I'm not really going to know the difference from one area to another. I can respond to that quickly. Uh, citywide, there are many plants that we use based on the Arizona Department of Water Resources and some other, we also have our own list. So you'll see a lot of commonality in different areas and what um, typically we uh, recommend and typically we don't want, but you are absolutely right. Each character area has it, its own emphasized plant palette, for example, the Apache area does have its own palette and so does character area three. You'll see a lot of overlap, but also some distinction. We will go into a little more detail on character area one. We'll seek your input. If there's any specific thing that we need to emphasize, we'll emphasize so we can make it unique, plus any common plants that uh, we like in the city. All right, so next up I saw Michelle. Brown, your hand went up next, so go ahead. Thank you. I have talked to um, people who had, from other character plan areas that were completed, and some of them did not feel that their input was really ever utilized by the city council or put into effect or used, so they felt pretty disappointed. That being said, I'd like, could you share some of the successes of what has happened with some of these character plans that the community really was listened to? I can take the first step and any other step, please feel free. Uh, I'm sorry you, you heard that kind of uh, comment. The last one we did in 2018 was character area three. It was a little contentious towards the end because many different groups of people had different ideas and opinions in terms of input and the staff had to try to balance it. So uh, we try to make the best possible arrangement of uh, make, taking all the inputs and <clears throat> hitting the balance. Uh, this plan is actually the residence and your plan. Um, staff only provides more of the technical uh, mandates and the consistency with other plans. Uh, we do like to hear from you um, and we do like to take as much input from everyone. I know sometimes there could be a little bit of a conflict in input from different groups of people. That's when we need to professionally moderate it. And maybe sometimes people think 100% of what they asked was not taken into account, but uh, that's a planning process. Uh, we deal with that kind of thing all the time, but uh, definitely would like to hear from you and address as much as possible all of your aspirations. Anybody else? Ryan, Robbie, Shauna, anybody wants to add anything? Could I, Ambika, could I um, add to that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Diana Kaminsky over in Com Community Development Planning. And I can tell you that 
um, it is very helpful. These character area plans help guide the staff recommendations. We work with the developers to try to come up with solutions that um, implement the different strategies within the plans. Um, but as Ambika said at the beginning of his presentation, because it's not a regulatory document, um, it's a guiding document. So all I can do is provide suggestions and whether or not they're taken is, you know, up to the to the applicant, but it also gets reinforced through our commission and council. So when I write my report, a section of the report says, how is this plan furthering the objectives of the character area plan? And I, I list how it is or how it isn't. And then our commission looks at that and the council probably too and, and says, you know, this is meeting in some areas, but it, it could do better in others and they may make suggestions or conditions based on that. But again, it's not a regulatory document. So it's just something that really helps us as another tool to try to get us to the vision you'd like to see. Thanks, Diana, I hope that helps. Okay, so next, Kelly, uh, you have your hand up, so go, go ahead. Thank you for the time and uh... Thank you for explaining uh, what character areas uh, you're looking towards for this area. Um, I actually just had a couple concerns. I'm all for the character areas, but my concern is actually addressing, I guess, the crime and the North Tempe migrant camps. Because if you update an area every week, I'm on Tempe three and one, or there's like new graffiti. It's like, even if you put something in that is beautiful, I don't think it's going to stay beautiful for long. Um, uh, we, we ride and we're on this path. We don't walk in the evenings anymore for safety reasons. I guess my concern is, is as a taxpayer, is this going to be, um, uh, are you going to take care of that situation first before this is addressed? I guess before we put in character or you put in character areas is my question. Thank you for that question. I can <clears throat> do the initial response and maybe Ryan or anyone can uh, can chime in um, as you know we the city does different things sometimes simultaneously because we need to address and tackle planning processes code compliances you know zoning ordinance and so forth simultaneously so the kind of uh, uh, issues that you raised are very important we do have code compliance and we do have other graffiti removal and many other mechanisms that simultaneously go. And as you said, we can call the city and get them going. Um, the one particular plan can only do so much. This plan is I defined as a very limited sc scope, but I certainly appreciate your concern. Anybody else wants to add to that? Yeah, Mika, this is Ryan Levick. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I know it's certainly a, a touchy subject, and um, we're going to have to work together with both, you know, the police department and efforts to um, avoid criminal activity such as, you know, graffiti. Um, I'll say at times, you know, working with community development and code compliance, which is in our department as well. A lot of times these areas are maybe there's not a lot of eyes in, in an area or there's like this blank canvas. Um, those become attractive areas for graffiti and so if there's ways to you know work on it by immediately removing the graffiti uh, making sure that this doesn't become a desirable place to perform graffiti and if you do that and replace it with other elements that are kind of more beautification efforts there's certainly an opportunity to discourage that type of graffiti incidents that happen um, you know some of the, the issues with encampments and transient transients in the area um, we got a great example of how the Banyan North Tempe project was, which is a new redevelopment in the area that that needed redevelopment. Um, you know, there's certainly a big opportunity to clean up some of these areas that have some of those housing issues uh, by by seeking new redevelopment that'll help. You know, for at least the time being, put new activity in an area that that otherwise was ignored. And there was a ton of graffiti on the perimeter of the county island area a lot of that will be going away and we're glad to see those changes that will help support the efforts that the community wants to see thank you ryan probably do we have any other hands on 
Heads up. We don't have any other hands up, but we do have a few questions um, in the in the chat. Yeah. Um, so the first question that I see in the chat um, is, what is the status of the marina on the lake? Will we have a yacht club? Um, I'll be 100% honest. I'm not 100% sure on the answer to that question. However, I see Craig Hayton is on and he is our parks um, guru. And so I'm going to turn it over to him and he can hopefully answer that question. You bet, Robbie. Thanks, everyone. This is Craig Hayton with Parks and Recreation. I think the, the best place to go to get information on the boathouse is azboathouse.org. Their website um, has information on where they're at. This is a um, a, a separate endeavor from the city um, through the Rio Salado Foundation. And they've got a lot of good renderings online and some project updates. Um, so I would just refer, and unfortunately I don't wanna punt this one, but I'd refer everybody to azboathouse.org. And that's gonna be the best place to, to get information on that. Now, we are from a, a larger perspective implementing the Rio Salado Master Plan. Um, which really does look at what the city can do for capital improvements around, but we also do rely upon private partners as well. And with the Rio Salado Foundation being one of them that we've we've had ongoing discussions with for the year. So I hope that helps. I'll put in a link in the in the chat as a reply, but Arizona, the azboathouse.org, I think would be a great place for folks to take a quick peek. Thanks, Robbie. Thank you, Craig. Um, the next question I see is, what is the city doing about additional police and fire since there will be more businesses and people going to live on this side of the lake? Um, I'm going to ask and see if Ryan can come back on and address that question. Yeah, certainly I'll, I'll do my best to answer this one. Um, I know that the police department is working actively on evaluating both the you know population increases for housing as well as businesses throughout the area and kind of doing a and whole overview of life cycle of where we're at from a city perspective right now and so they're they're working with a consultant to analyze land use um, even projected future land use to see and find out where the best appropriate area is for um, police services in addition to that we have the um, uh, fire department to actively seeking areas and specifically one fire station that would could service the North Tempe area and, and the approximate area around there. It may not exactly be within North Tempe, but um, they intend to pro provide some service area needs in the northern portion of the city. Um, and that'll be forthcoming through those departments and their efforts to find uh, appropriate locations for, for um, property sites that could provide those additional police and fire department services. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and Bika, oh, I just see another question popped in. Is carbon neutrality a part of the conversation? Um, I'll go ahead and take a stab at that one. Um, we will be working very closely with our uh, sustainability um, division and integrating the um, plan um, that they are putting forward. Um, and Bika, I am blanking on the name of the plan. Climate action plan. The climate action plan. Thank you, Ambika and Shauna. So we will be um, using the climate action plan and and really working with our sustainability division um, to integrate things that, from the climate action plan into this uh, character area plan as well. So I um, hope that answers your question, Johanna. Thanks, Ravi, for that. I will just quickly add. I don't know if Braden K is on this line. Braden, by any chance? Okay, otherwise, just like Robbie said, the climate action plan is citywide. So there's a carbon neutrality goal. There's also a goal of how much renewable energy we want to achieve by 2035 and 2050. So all of these citywide things, as I was making the presentation in the beginning, are part of the input to us, the character area planning. Uh, so we will be cognizant of those goals and anything that we do, even on character area one, we would like to accommodate and make, make them compatible and consistent to promote those goals. Other questions, Ravi? Um, 
I do see one that's uh, from Colin. Is the city issuing any new RFPs for our area? Um, I, I'm not aware of um, any RFPs. Um, I see Jill um, mentioned or asked about upcoming RFPs too. Um, so I don't know, staff um, that's on, if you, uh, Craig, um, Jill Bushbacher, if you guys have any idea about any uh, upcoming RFPs that the city will be issuing um, that you can, can speak to. Hey, Ravi, it's Craig with Parks and Rec. I can talk to the Rio Salado uh, question that Jill brought up. Um, one of the first strategies for implementation of the plan is looking for um, a recreational amenity or amenities that um, somebody from the, the private sector would be willing to design, build, and operate. So we would be anticipating putting out an RFP for recreational amenity or amenities um, sometime in the summer. We're working with our staff team currently on putting that together, which is a follow-up from a request for information where we gauged interest from the business community and then ran that through the public back in September working with Shauna and the team. So really it's a continued process for us really related to what is out. And uh, Jill, we've got Maria working from the economic development team on that one specifically, and uh, really look forward to some fruit coming from that here in the future with some additional kind of conceptual planning efforts for the north side of the town lake. Thank you, Craig, I appreciate that. Um, I do see a question uh, from Darlene about the uh, renewing the IGA um, with Phoenix um, about takeoffs and landings at uh, Sky Harbor. Um, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you have any imp input on that. Um, and that's not necessarily something that falls in the character area planning efforts. Um, and that's kind of a bigger issue um, than, than this. So I don't know if you want to touch on that really quick. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it's, certainly it's it's a unique area of the character area plan where I guess noise is an issue or concern for the residents. And certainly that'll be an opportunity maybe to address in working with the Aviation Commission and see what plans uh, they want to bring forward. Um, so we'll be working closely with residents and the Aviation Commission to see if there's anything we need to highlight in terms of um, future IGAs or, or goals and efforts with, with addressing uh, noise in the, in the neighborhood. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. Um, Bika, that's really all the questions um, that I see. Oh, uh, Kelly, what, got one in. What's the future for dedicated pedestrian paths? Uh, let me see if there is somebody from transportation on here. I see Robert Yavez. Um, Robert, yeah, can, you, can you uh, give us some insight on the future of dedicated pedestrian paths in character area one? Oh. We, uh, I, I, there is one that we're trying to do right now, one that connects a Grand Canal that's built by Phoenix. We're trying to do a connection with the, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the canal there. The first cross one. Crosscut? Yeah, Crosscut Canal. We're trying to do a, a safer connection there, adding traffic signal where the first, what is the first building? There's an alley behind that building, making a connection directly to the Crosscut Canal, maybe putting a signal. The design is funded. We're just waiting for our ADA to do the solicitation for us. And it should happen this year, the design at least. And then we have everything funded for the construction as well in 23, 2023. Excellent. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Robert. So, Robbie, it's uh, almost one o'clock. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming. Sona, is there something you want to make an announcement on the survey or anything else? Yes. So um, I put in the chat, but if you guys haven't gone yet, make sure you go to the website. We'll have all the meeting materials. So Michelle, to your question, yes, we'll have today's presentation is already on there. Um, as is the direct links to the survey that's open up through April 4th. 
Um, and also like to your question, Kelly, uh, one of the questions we ask is where do you want to see these kinds of paths? And you can actually put a dot on the map and, and help us plan for that in the future as well, besides what's currently planned. So that input really helps shape um, what the plan might look like. So we really encourage you to go there, give your input, share it with your neighbors, encourage them as well. Um, and again, uh, to just keep updated on the process, that website will be continuously updated and you'll be able to um, get everything you need there. Great. Thank you, Sana. Brenda, you have anything to add? No, thank you. Brian, any last words? No, uh, thank you very much. And I guess we'll be having this uh, presentation again this evening tonight, correct? Exactly. The same meeting, same format, same presentation. All of you are again welcome to come if you want to join that meeting or spread the word for new people to join the meeting at six o'clock in the Zoom. Okay, so with that, it's a 101. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, my colleagues, and also everyone who attended. We'll see some of you again in the evening or we'll see you later on in many different meetings. Uh, feel free to call us, take part in the survey like Sana mentioned, and be in touch. Thank you. <laughs>